Hello, welcome to our Bible readings for 2022. In our readings, we are following an ancient pattern, pattern of Bible reading and reflection called Lectio Divina. First, we listen to the reading, read by myself, then we prayerfully consider it as we reflect and meditate upon it. Then, after listening to the reading again, we pray to the Lord to lead us into the day ahead. Today we're reading Acts 10, verses 34 to 43. But first, I quieten myself as I enter prayer now. I pause to be still. I breathe slowly. In Psalm 103, verses 1 to 4, we read, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost deep being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. O Lord, Today I praise your holy name as I remember all that you have done for me in Jesus. Now we have our reading, as I mentioned, Acts 10 verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism but accepts men from every nation who fear him and who do what is right. This is the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling them the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good, healing all who were under the power of, of the devil, because God was with, with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, and everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our reading today begins with the verse, Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. I wonder if you know how many different nations there are in the world. At the last count, uh, there are 195 countries in the world today. 193 countries that are member states of the United Nations, two countries that are non-member observer states, the Holy See, the Vatican, and the state of Palestine. But then if we ask how many different nations or nationalities there are on earth, or even tribes or tongues, well that number multiplies dramatically. There are over 7,100 identified distinct languages spoken in the world today. English remains the most widely spoken language in the world at the moment, there being 1.132 billion English speakers currently worldwide. Mandarin at 1.117 billion comes a close second, 
with Hindi at 615 million and Spanish at 534 million coming in third and fourth. But how many different nations and peoples there are? How many different languages, races and tribes? Although even scientists agree, let alone Christians, Jews and Muslims, that every one of us on the planet, every human that is and ever shall be, are all descended from one human female dubbed Eve. Yet there are so many different peoples, tribes, dialects, languages, skin colour, heritage, so much diversity, so many differences. But in Acts 10, we witness a very real moment, a sea change in Peter's understanding as a Jewish believer in Jesus. A moment when suddenly he realised that God no longer counts the differences or even notices them. Following a three-time repeated vision and voice in which he's instructed not to call anything impure that God has declared clean, he's told by the Spirit to not hesitate to get up and go with three men that the Spirit has sent to get him. Peter accompanies them to the house of Cornelius, a Roman centurion no less, someone who Peter as a Jew would never have dreamed of associating with, eating with, let alone telling about Jesus. But knowing how the Spirit had spoken to him, Peter, and hearing how an angel had also appeared to Cornelius, telling Cornelius to send for Peter. Well, then in Acts 10, verse 34, we read, Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts men and women from every nation who fear him and do what is right. This Easter, let's hear those words of Peter spoken again. And this Easter, let the full impact of them hit our understanding. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism. At Easter time, we remember that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. But we also remember that he came to give his life for the sins of the world. In Isaiah 25, verses 6 to 9, uh, we read, On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples. A banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. It goes on to, to say the sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. We might say whatever the colour of the skin of those faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth, the Lord has spoken. In Isaiah 49 verses 5 and 6. And now the Lord says, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, Isaiah speaking of the servant of the Lord, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself, the Jews. He says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth, to the ends of the earth. Here in Acts 10, Peter says, all the prophets testify about him, Jesus, that everyone who believes in him dare we say anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This Easter, when we are again being reminded of the terrible nature of war, when we're being reminded of everything that divides, well, this Easter, when we look at the cross, let's, let's see not just the Jesus who died for me, or the Jesus who died for us. 
but the Jesus who died for all, the Jesus who died for any. O oh Lord, keep me from believing that only certain people can be saved. Keep me from believing that some people just aren't worth it. Let me say with Paul in Romans 1 verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Cause me to know this Easter that you have accepted me and that there is no limit to your saving power in Jesus, for me or for others, in his most glorious name. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and who do what is right. This is the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling them the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good, healing all who were under the power of, of the devil, because God was with, was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him and everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And now we close in prayer. Father, help me to walk before you this day, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to love you and serve others this day, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lonely and the lost this day, proclaiming Christ in word and deed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>